This is a quick-ish guide to the Farman 3, an early biplane trainer and reconnaissance aircraft that saw service during the Italo-Turkish War of 1911-1912 and the First Balkan War of 1912-1913. Therefore it represents one of the earliest aircraft to be used as warplanes. Sort of. Well, not really. Uh, picture me whittle-waffling with my right hand. When I started the research for this video, I was indeed wanting to cover the Farman biplane that saw service in the wars referenced. General opinion seems to be that this was indeed the Farman III. However, further research indicates that this wasn't the case. This video took longer than expected because of that. As far as I can tell, following a discussion with researcher George Candilakis on the World War I aircraft and earlier 1903-1918 Facebook group, the aircraft in question was really the Farman 50 horsepower type Militaire Rapide, which appears to be a development of the Farman 3. But as you might be able to tell, a quick guide to the 50 horsepower Farman Militaire Rapide gets a bit cumbersome, so for the purposes of this video I'll treat it as a variant of the Farman 3, which does not seem too unreasonable. One of the problems in identification is that products of Avion Farman don't follow a precise nomenclature, unlike, say, those of Louis Blériot, and they produce large numbers of variants for various purposes. The Voisin aircraft are worse. I mention this because the Voisin brothers, Gabriel and Charles, will pop up shortly during this narrative. Anyone trying to come up with a definitive work on the Voisins and Farmans has my deepest respect. Avion Farman, or Farman Aviation Works in English, was established by the brothers Richard, Henri and Maurice Farman to build aircraft and engines in 1908. It lasted under that name until 1936, when the French nationalized and rationalized their aeronautical industry, and the assets were assigned to the Société Nationale de Construction Aéronautique du Centre. The reason for my rather schizophrenic mix of French and English pronunciation is because les frères Farman were Anglo-French on their father's side, so it seems appropriate and unavoidable. Indeed, it wasn't until 1937 that Henri, alternatively Henry Farman, took French citizenship. Actually, some versions state that both parents were English, but nonetheless they spent their lives in France. The Farman aircraft initially owed a lot to Gabriel Voisin, a name I will probably cover in other videos, especially those focusing on Voisin aircraft. The arrangement between the Farman brothers and Voisin brothers fell apart in 1909 when Gabriel Voisin seems to have built and sold an aircraft built to Farman specifications to someone else. However, this permitted Avion Farman to design and build aircraft of their own, and the first of these is actually the nominal subject of this video, the Farman 3. As can be determined from the name assigned to it, the Farman 3 was part of a development process. This process began with the Voisin 1907 biplanes and progressed through modifications to the Voisin Farman 1. Design refinements led to Voisin building the Farman 2, and it was its sale to JTC Moore Brabazon that led to the split between the two sets of brothers. Finding suitable pictures proved difficult, so the one presented here is actually of a Voisin Farman 1. All the mentioned aircraft show a certain family similarity, that is, they all have a box kite type of destruction and they are single engine biplanes mostly. Some experimentation was actually done with a triplane layout, but dropped. Except for the Farman 2, which was a tractor design, they all utilized a single pusher engine in a layout essentially pioneered by les frères voisins. Initially and rather distinctively, the Voisin 1907 featured a forward elevator, first in a biplane layout, to be replaced by a single control surface. The Farman 2 dropped the forward elevator, but this was re-established in the Farman 3. 
In August 1908, or so the story goes, Henry Farman saw Wilbur Wright flying the Wright Flyer III at a demonstration in Le Mans. The famously secretive Wright brothers had finally been persuaded to go public with their aircraft. The Wright Flyer series of aircraft all utilized wing warping for lateral control, as patented by the Wrights in 1906. Inspired, Henry Farman equipped his aircraft with ailerons. I'm guessing here, but this was likely to be because wing warping was hard work for the pilot, compromised the structural integrity of the wing, and ailerons were easier to implement. As a side note, it is arguable that the use of ailerons, present in some French flying machines since 1902, would neatly circumvent potential legal action taken by the rights in France. Glenn Curtis in the United States, who employed ailerons in his own aircraft, wasn't so lucky and was sued by the rights for violation of their US patent and lost, despite the fact that ailerons had first been patented in 1868 and weren't described by the 1906 patent. I guess being national heroes has its benefits. But back to the Farman 3 and its derivatives. The Farman 3 was the first aircraft designed and built by the Farman Aviation Works. It was a success. The experience gained working with the Voisins came to remarkable fruition. It was stable, easy to fly, and gained popularity as a training aircraft. Along with the Blériot Type 11, it was a staple of early flying schools. It was a demonstrably reliable aircraft, setting endurance and altitude records with various pilots at the controls. It was also adaptable, being equipped with several different engines, generally generating 50 horsepower. If it can be said to have a deficiency, it was speed. At only 37 miles per hour, it would have had significant trouble in heavy winds, and had anyone been foolhardy enough to try, could actually have flown backwards in a heavy headwind. This wasn't an unusual uh, characteristic of early aircraft, however, and early flight has several instances of record attempts, for example, flying the channel, having to wait until the wind conditions were correct. Construction was of necessity light and rather fragile, although strong enough for its purpose. Ash was the primary structural member, with aluminium joints, wire bracing and stretched fabric to cover the wings. Twin booms, practically inevitable with pusher types, supported large biplane rudders and tail surfaces. The influence of the design is difficult to understate and gave rise to the term Farman type in reference to designs clearly inspired by the Farman III and its successors. These include, but are not limited to, the Bristol Boxkite, the short S-27, and the Royal Aircraft FE series. FE incidentally stands for Farman Experimental. This despite the fact that the Farmans were heavily influenced by the Voisins. This influence was made possible by the successors of the Voisin, Voisin Farman, and Farman Aircraft and their extensive coverage in the aviation press. Detailed information was available, as exemplified by coverage given by Flight magazine from 1909. Assisted by the surprisingly open approach to aircraft design of the Europeans, this gave ideas and designs free reign to travel the world, so it comes as no surprise that their influence was so widespread. To give an example, in France, Robert Esnault Pelterie attempted to build a Wright Brothers glider that featured wing warping in 1902, but switched successfully to ailerons when he couldn't get it to work properly. The increasing success of aircraft were of interest to various militaries who appreciated the possibilities of aerial reconnaissance. Among these were the Italians, who assembled a mixed group of aircraft in their aviation division, which were sent to participate in the Italo-Turkish War of 1911-1912. to Nine aircraft comprised the complement. Two Blériot Type 11s, three Newports, two Farman biplanes and two Etrich Tauber monoplanes. In command was Captain Carlo Maria Piazza, along with Captains Ricardo Moiso and Captain Leopoldo Dorada, also Lieutenants Hugo de Rossi and Julio Gavotti, plus six reserve pilots. The first official communication regarding the use of aeroplanes in war was issued by the Italians dated November 5th from Tripoli. 
it states, Yesterday, Captains Moizo, Piazza and Dorada carried out an aeroplane reconnaissance, Dorada successfully trying a new Farman military biplane. Moizo, after having located the position of the enemy's battery, flew over Enzara and dropped two bombs into the Arab encampment. He found that the enemy were much diminished in numbers since he saw them last time. Piazza dropped two bombs on the enemy with effect. The object of the reconnaissance was to discover the headquarters of the Arabs and Turkish troops, which is at Sok el Jama. Of particular interest here is the reference to Captain Dorada. Leopoldo Dorada tends to get short shrift compared with his colleagues who achieved the first military reconnaissance, the first bombing mission, the first night mission, the first to be hit by ground fire, and the first pilot who became a POW. Dorada's claim to fame is that he was flying a new Farman military biplane. The question is, which Farman? The accompanying picture is one of the Farman biplanes that accompanied the expedition, and the first clue is that the biplane is of significantly unequal span, which more or less eliminates the Farman 3 as a contender. Secondly, ailerons are to be found only on the top wing, not on both the top and bottom as in the Farman 3. Also, it is a two-seater, as accounts of the Italo-Turkish war corroborate. Another clue is in the Italian communication itself, in which it is stated that it was a new type. This was two years after the first appearance of the Farman III. Also, there is the specific reference to it being a military aircraft. Another clue is the First Balkan War. The First Balkan War was a conflict between the Balkan League, Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece and Montenegro, and the Ottoman Empire between October 1912 and May 1913. For our purposes, it is significant that both sides employed aircraft during the conflict, and it is generally considered that seven Farman biplanes that participated in this conflict were Farman threes. However, a picture of the aircraft deployed, seen here, reveal that they are the same as the aircraft used by the Italians, which we have determined, kind of, are probably not Farman 3s. This is where we briefly return to the discussion with George Candilakis I referred to previously. George has spent far more time than I have researching this subject and reckons that the actual aircraft used were the Farman 50 horsepower type Militaire Rapide, and referring to French aeroplanes before the Great War by Leonard E. Opdyke supports this conclusion. Mostly. There appears to be a slight difference between the rudder assembly in the Italian and Greek pictures and the picture of the Militaire Rapide in the book referenced, but it's the closest match I can find, and so therefore I will go on record as saying that the Farmans deployed in both conflicts were Farman 50 horsepower type Militaire Rapides. In discussing other aircraft types, they would probably be regarded as a variant of the Farman 3, and certainly there exist a positive plethora of types with a family similarity. Curiously, a flight magazine of January 1913 describes the seven deployed by Greece as being six 50 horsepower and one 80 horsepower Farmans. The Farman III was completely obsolete by the outbreak of World War I, and apart from use as a trainer, I can find no reference to its use even early in the conflict. That doesn't mean it didn't, and I wouldn't be surprised if it did, I just haven't found a specific reference in the time available to me. Similarly, the Farman Militaire Rapide. By this time, the Farmans had advanced in design significantly, and far more suitable aircraft were available. As far as I can tell, no original Farman 3s exist. However, a flying replica is exhibited at the Leonardo da Vinci National Museum of Science and Technology in Milan, Italy. A second specimen is exhibited at the Militarhistorisches Museum Flugplatz in Berlin, Germany. A non-flying model of the first Greek Militaire Rapide, named Daedalus, hangs outside the War Museum in Athens.